Good evening. I'm film noir historian Eddie Muller, and thanks for joining me for tonight's Friday Night Spotlight, which I'm shining on writer Cornell Woolrich. It's safe to say that Woolrich's stories often don't make sense. But I ask, do your nightmares make sense? Woolrich's world is all about dread and desperation, panic and paranoia, fear and fatalism. Nightmares rarely have a satisfying conclusion. They just end. Woolrich has to wrap things up conveniently. Case in point, our next movie, Deadline at Dawn. It's classic Woolrich. A man believes he'll be accused of murder and has only six hours, in the dead of night of course, to find the real killer. He enlists the aid of a few lonely, embittered allies, and together they careen through the creepy city, seeking clues and slamming into all sorts of strange, nefarious characters. Does it make sense? Not really. Does it matter? No. This isn't reality, it's a nightmare conjured by a frantic and frazzled imagination. Deadline at Dawn is the only film directed by Harold Klurman, one of the founders of New York's legendary group theater and the director of such Broadway classics as Awake and Sing, Paradise Lost, and Golden Boy. Klurman was a Manhattan native, so I can only assume he appreciated Woolrich's sinister vision of the city at 4 a.m. Clifford Odets, the group theater's premier playwright, adapted Deadline at Dawn as a favor to his colleague. The result is a moody and at times goofy concoction, a noir thriller stuffed with existential oration, most of it courtesy of Paul Lucas as the most philosophical taxi driver ever. Be prepared for plenty of coincidence and confusion, except for two things that are utterly certain. Nicholas Musaraka is one of the geniuses of black and white cinematography, and Susan Hayward never looked sexier than she does in front of his camera, slinking through the shadows of Cornell Woolrich's imagination. From 1946, here's Deadline at Dawn. <laughs> 